Because of Winn-Dixie, written by Kate DiCamillo. Chapter four. One, said the preacher, we were sitting on the couch and Winn-Dixie was sitting between us. Winn-Dixie had already decided that he liked the couch a lot. One, said the preacher again. Winn-Dixie looked at him kind of hard. Your mama was funny. She could make just about anybody laugh. Two, he said. She had red hair and freckles. Just like me, I said. Just like you, the preacher nodded. Three, she liked to plant things. She had a talent for it. She could stick a tire in the ground and grow a car. When Dixie started chewing on his paw and I tapped him on his head to make him stop. Four, said the preacher. She could run fast. If you were racing her, you couldn't ever let her get a head start because she would beat you for sure. I'm that way too, I said. Back home in Watley, I raced Liam Fullerton and beat him. And he said it wasn't fair because boys and girls shouldn't race each other to begin with. I told him he was just being a sore loser. The preacher nodded. He was quiet for a minute. I'm ready for number five, I told him. Five, he said. She couldn't cook. She burned everything, including water. She had a hard time opening a can of beans. She couldn't make head nor tail of a piece of meat. Six, the preacher rubbed his nose and looked up at the ceiling. When Dixie looked up too. Number six is that your mama loved a story. She could sit and listen to stories all day long. She loved to be told a story. She especially liked funny ones, stories that made her laugh. The preacher nodded his head like he was agreeing with himself. What's number seven, I asked. Let's see. He said, she knew all the constellations, every planet in the nighttime sky, every last one of them. She could name them and point them out. And she never got tired of looking up at them. Number eight, said the preacher with his eyes closed, was that she hated being a preacher's wife. She said she just couldn't stand living the lay. She couldn't stand having the ladies at church judge what she was wearing and what she was cooking and how she was singing. She said it made her feel like a bug under a microscope. When Dixie lay down on the couch, he put his nose in the preacher's lap and his tail in mine. 10, said the preacher. Nine, I told him. Nine, said the preacher. She drank, she drank beer and whiskey and wine sometimes. She couldn't stop drinking. And that made me and your mama fight quite a bit. Number 10, he said with a long sigh. <sighs> Number 10 is that your mama loved you. She loved you very much. But she left me, I told him. She left us, said the preacher softly. I could see him pulling his old turtle head back into his stupid turtle shell. She packed her bags and left us. She didn't even leave one thing behind. Okay, I said. I got up off the couch. When Dixie hopped off too. Thank you for telling me, I said. I went right back into my room and wrote down all 10 things that the preacher had told me. I wrote them down just the way he said them to me so that I wouldn't forget them. And then I read them out loud to Win Dixie until I had them memorized. I wanted to know those 10 things inside out 
That way, if Mama ever came back, I could recognize her and I would be able to grab her and hold on to her tight and not ever let her go away from me again. Chapter 5, When Dixie Couldn't Stand to be Left Alone. We found that out real quick. If me and the preacher went off and left him by himself in the trailer, he pulled all the cushions off the couch and all the toilet paper off the roll. So we started tying him up outside with the rope when he left. When we left. I apologize. That didn't work either. When Dixie howled until Mr. Samuel, Miss Detweller's dog, started howling too. It was exactly the kind of noise that people in an all adult trailer park do not like to hear. He just doesn't want to be left alone, I told the preacher. That's all. Let's take him with us. I could understand the way when Dixie felt. Getting left behind probably made his heart feel empty. After a while, the preacher gave in, and everywhere we went, we took, we took Winn-Dixie, even to church. The Open Arms Baptist Church of Naomi isn't a regular-looking church. The building used to be a picket quick store, and when you walk in the front door, the first thing you see is the picket quick model. It's written on the floor in little tiny red tiles that make great big letters that say, pick, 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 quick, quick, quick. The preacher tried painting over those tiles, but the letters won't stay covered up. And so the preacher has just given up and let them be. The other thing about the open arms that is different from other churches is there aren't any pews. People bring in their own fold up chairs and lawn chairs. And so sometimes it looks more, it looks more like a congregation is watching a parade or sitting at a barbecue instead of being at church. It's kind of a strange church, and I thought when dixie would fit right in. But the first time we brought Win dixie to the open arms, the preacher tied him outside the front door. Why did we bring him all the way here just to tie him up? I asked the preacher. Because dogs don't belong in church, Opal. The preacher said, that's why. He tied Win Dixie up to a tree and said how there was lots of shade for him and that it ought to work out real good. Well, it didn't. The service started and there was some singing and some sharing and some praying. And then some of the preachers started preaching and he wasn't but two or three words into his sermon when there was a terrible howl coming from outside. The preacher tried to ignore it. Today, he said, I said when dixie please said the preacher oh said when dixie back friends said the preacher ah, ah, wailed when dixie everyone turned their lawn chairs and folded chairs and looked at each other opal the preacher said oh said when dixie yes sir i said go get that dog he yelled Yes, sir, I yelled back. I went outside and untied Win dixie and brought him inside, and he sat down beside me and smiled up at the preacher, and the preacher couldn't help it. He smiled back. Win dixie had that effect on him, and so the preacher started in preaching again. Win dixie sat there listening to it, wiggling his ears this way and that, trying to catch all the words, and everything would have been all right except that a mouse ran across the floor. The open arms had mice. They were there from when it was a picket quick, and there were lots of good things to eat in the building. And when the picket quick became the open arms Baptist Church of Naomi, the mice stayed around to eat all the leftover. Oh, 
crumbs from the potluck suppers. The preacher kept on saying he was going to have to do something about them, but he never did. Because the truth is, he couldn't stand the thought of hurting anything, even a mouse. Well, when Dixie saw that mouse, and he was up and after him, one minute everything was quiet and serious, and the preacher was going on and on and on and on, and the next minute, when Dixie looked like a furry bullet shooting across the building, chasing that mouse, he was barking and his feet were sliding all over the polished picket quick floor, and the people were clapping and hollering and pointing. They really went wild when Wendy Dixie actually caught the mouse. I have never in my life seen a dog catch a mouse, says Miss Nordley. She was sitting next to me. He's a special dog, I told her. I imagine so, she said back. Wind Dixie stood up there in the front of the whole church, wagging his tail and holding the mouse real careful in his mouth holding onto him tight, but not squishing him. I believe that mutt has got some retriever in him, said somebody behind me. That's a hunting dog. When Dixie took the mouse over to the preacher and dropped it at his feet. And when the mouse tried to get away, when Dixie put his paw right on the mouse's tail, then he smiled up at the preacher. He showed him all his teeth. The preacher looked down at the mouse. He looked at Win Dixie. He looked at me. He rubbed his nose. It got real quiet in the picket quick. Let us pray, the preacher finally said, for this mouse. And everybody started laughing and clapping. The preacher picked up the mouse by the tail and walked it and threw it out the front door of the picket quick. And everybody applauded again. Then he came back and we all prayed together. I prayed for my mama. I told God how much she would have enjoyed hearing the story of Win Dixie catching that mouse. It would have made her laugh. I asked God if maybe I could be the one to tell her the story someday. And then I talked to God about how I was lonely in Naomi because I didn't know that many kids, only the ones from church. And there weren't that many kids at the open arms, just Dunlap and Stevie Dewberry, two brothers that weren't twins, but looked like they were. And Amanda Wilkinson, whose face was always pinched up like she was smelling something real bad. And Sweetie Pie Thomas, who was only five years old and still mostly a baby. And none of them wanted to be my friend anyway, because they probably thought I'd tell them to the preacher for every little thing they did wrong. And then... They would get in trouble with God and their parents. So I told God that I was lonely, even having one Dixie. And finally, I prayed for the mouse, like the preacher suggested. I prayed that he didn't get hurt when he went flying out the door of the Open Arms Baptist Church of Naomi. I prayed that he landed on a nice soft patch of grass. Chapter six. I spent a lot of time that summer at the, at the Herman W. Block Memorial Library. The Herman W. Block Memorial Library sounds like it would be a big fancy place, but it's not. It's just a little old house full of books and Miss Franny Block is in charge of them all. She's very small, a very old woman with short gray hair. And she was the first friend I made in Naomi. It all started with Win Dixie not liking it when I went into the library because he couldn't go inside too. But I showed him how he could stand up on his hind legs and look in the window and see me in there, selecting my books. And he was okay as long as he could see me. But the thing was, the first time his Franny Block saw Win Dixie standing up on his hind legs like that, looking in the window, she didn't think he was a dog. She thought he was a bear. This is what happened. I was picking out my books and kind of humming to myself. And all of a sudden, there was this loud, scary scream. 
I went running up to the front of the library and there, was Miss Franny Block sitting on the floor behind her desk. Miss Franny Block, I said, are you all right? A bear, she said. Oh, a bear, I asked. He's come back, she said. He has, I asked. Where is he? Out there, she said and raised a finger and pointed at when Dixie standing up on his hind legs, looking in the window for me. Miss Franny Block, I said, that's not a bear, that's a dog. That's my dog, Winn-Dixie. Are you positive? She asked. Yes, ma'am, I told her. I'm positive. He's my dog. I would know him anywhere. Miss Franny sat there trembling and shaking. Come on, I said. Let me help you up. It's okay. I stuck out my hand and Miss Franny took hold of it and I pulled her up off the floor. She didn't weigh hardly anything at all. Once she was standing on her feet, she started acting all embarrassed, saying how I must think she was, si she was a silly old lady mistaking a dog for a bear. But that, she said, that she had a bad experience with the bear coming into the Herman W. Block Memorial Library a long time ago, and she never had quite gotten over it. When did that happen? I asked her. Well, she said, Miss Franny, is a very long story. That's okay, I told her. I'm like my mama in that I like to be told stories. But before you start telling it, can Win Dixie come in and listen too? He gets lonely without me. Well, I don't know, said Miss Franny. Dogs are not allowed in the Herman W. Block Memorial Library. He'll be good, I told her. He's a good dog who goes to church. And before she could say yes or no, I went outside and got Win Dixie. And he came in and lay down with a hum and a sigh right at Miss Franny's feet. She looked down at him and said, He most certainly is a large dog. Yes, ma'am, I told her. He has a large heart, too. Well, Miss Franny said, she bent over and gave Win Dixie a pat on his head. And when Dixie wagged his tail back and forth and snuffled his nose on her little old lady feet. Let me get a chair and sit down and I can tell you the story properly. I wake up each morning and I watch the sun go down. 